Hello, and welcome to Rave History. Well, today is all about Pluto. All about Pluto. Poor Pluto, you know. Pluto has uh, been uh, publicly shamed by the, the World Astronomical Society and reduced from being a planet to being a dwarf. I don't think that Pluto is deeply appreciative of that, but nonetheless, um, be that as it may, we live in a Pluto interregnum. As a matter of fact, we're living in a time that is so deeply, deeply, deeply Plutonic. And in it being deeply Plutonic, we're dealing with enormous potential for upheaval in our way of life. It really actually begins with something else. It begins with uh, our genetics, and it begins with codons. It begins with the 41st gate, the 41st gate of decrease. This gate of decrease, this is the initiating codon in, in our genetics. And literally what that means is that the 41st gate is the initiator of things. When we celebrate the Rave New Year, we celebrate that Rave New Year when the sun enters into the 41st gate, initiating the beginning of a new cycle. In 1781, the advent of the nine-centered being, in 1781, Pluto was in the 41st gate, that is, in the initiating codon. And in 2027, that is at the close of this cycle and the emergence of uh, an entirely new cycle and process, that in 2027, Pluto will be again in the 41st gate. This is Pluto's interregnum. Everything that's taking place from the moment that the nine-centered being emerged to the moment of the mutation of the solar plex center in 2027 and the changing of the cycle has all been dominated by Pluto. But more than that, as Pluto moves through each of these gates, after all, the Pluto cycle, again, is over 250 years, as Pluto moves through each of these gates, these gates are being transformed. It is the death and resurrection. It is deep, deep changes that are taking place. Perhaps the most extraordinary is the human experiential way. The human experiential way, beginning in the 41st gate, where Pluto was in 1781. In 1793, Pluto had already reached the, four, the 30th gate. And the first definition of the human experiential way was made. That would be followed in 1815 by Pluto entering into the 36th gate. And finally, in, the, in 1894, Pluto completing its cycle and ending it in the 35th gate, the human experiential way. What is so important to understand is that experiential way is the old way, the way of the seven-centered being, that all of that is coming to an end, that all of this within this Pluto interregnum is something in which there is a death and there is a resurrection. It can be seen in a number of ways. It is the end of the seven-centered way of life, though it does not appear so in the homogenized world around us. We're still caught deeply in the strategic world of the seven-centered being. Its fears, its need to go and, you know, conquer the other, its need to be able to find a way to provide for its ultimate security, always, always afraid. I mean, this is not what we are. And as long as we are holding on to this past, as Pluto moves us slowly but surely towards our future, then it's going to leave us in a world that is deeply murky and frightening. There is a great change that is taking place in the world. And we are approaching the gateway of that. All of this, all of this is about Pluto. It's like Pluto now, today. Pluto sitting there in the 10th gate, the gate of behavior. Our very behavior is being transformed in preparation for the cycle that is coming, in preparation for the transformation and mutation that is taking place within the form principle itself. Well, the World Astronomical Societies may have deemed it appropriate to put Pluto into a minor class, but Pluto has its revenge. It is the ruler of this cycle.